there's a lot of interest in regenerative agriculture. Agriculture that enhances biodiversity and generates its fertility from within. Indigenous communities would not refer to it as regenerative agriculture. They just refer to it as agriculture. Last time, Nick, you said that I gave you a bit too much hype in my introduction. So this time I'm just introducing you as Nick Jeffries. Thank you, Seb. Good to be back on the show. And we do have some questions in, don't we, Jess? Yes, we do. So we received quite a few questions online, uh, but I'm going to start with one that we got via Instagram, which is, what is the difference between the regeneration process of the circular economy and recycling? And we often get asked that, is the circular economy just more recycling? Yeah, so recycling we refer to as a downstream solution, sometimes even the loop of last resort. If you're recycling, the product or material has become waste. But the circular economy is about preventing it becoming waste in the first place by designing it to be in part of part of the cycle. And of course, regeneration is a key pillar of the circular economy, and that's about making sure life is at the centre of all design and business decisions and trying to sort of raise the ambition from doing less harm to actually having a positive impact. We're going to move to LinkedIn now. We've got a question in from Pramila. Uh, I picked this one out just for you, Nick, because I thought you'd really like this one. Um, and she asked, how can we connect the circular economy and in indigenous knowledge systems? Yes, I love this question. And thank you for picking it out, Seb. Um, indigenous technology and knowledge systems have been refined and adapted over millennia and they've, they've, they've stood the test of time. So if we're trying to build an economy that lasts for the long term, why, why would we not look and see if we can learn from these systems? To take, for example, farming, and you know, at the moment, you know, there's a lot of interest in regenerative agriculture. Agriculture that enhances biodiversity and generates its fertility from within. Indigenous communities would not refer to it as regenerative agriculture. They just refer to it as agriculture. Uh, and if you look at the Mayan people, for example, they have a system called milpa, which is a sort of intercropping system of different crops that, you know, that works together as a symbiosis. Um, if you look at some of the ancient Amazonian communities, they use biochar to generate soil fertility. Um, the Chaga people in the foothills of the Kilimanjaro, they've been practicing agroforestry for thousands of years. We know how to do this, and that's whether we're visiting the latest up and coming innovators and startups, whether we're looking back at practices and knowledge that's existed for centuries. Thank you, Nick. And we've got one more from LinkedIn. This is from Jenny. Um, so she's asking, what are the first steps elementary schools, educators and their students can take to create a mini version of the circular economy? I'm glad we finished with this question. Schools, the future generation. So I'm actually, I'm running a little circular economy course in my eight-year-old son's local school at the moment. It's a course that we've developed with uh, Lego, one of our partners. It's called Build, Build the Change, a future without waste. And one great little exercise we did last week was I got all the children to look at their canteens. So most schools have a canteen. So I asked them to look at all the inflows of resources, the food, the packaging, energy, water, going into their canteens. And I asked them, using Lego, to see if they can circularize that a bit. Maybe my, making connections with things around their school. They love that exercise, and it could be a lovely starting point on their circular economy journey. And whilst at the foundation we don't do a huge amount of kind of direct engagement with young people, when we do, what we find is that the mindset shift part of a circular economy is really easy for them to understand. Um, and that's not true when we engage with se seasoned professionals. That's often the hardest part for them to get their heads around. Well, well young people, the ability to reimagine the world is actually not their biggest challenge. Thank you, Nick. And my goodness, those young people getting to do a circular economy course with Nick Jeffries. I'm so jealous that I didn't get that experience as a young person. 